Hello, and welcome to my QTP video tutorial, where today I'll show you the steps that you should take to be able to create a new order in the Windows Flight app that comes with HP's Quick Test Professional. So the first step that we need to take is we need to enter a date of the flight that we would like to take. This would be the departure date. The date input is two digits for the month, two digits for the day, and two digits for the year. You can enter any day that you would like, sometime reasonable, like within the next couple of months following whatever the current date is that you're using the application. So for my example, I will use January the 1st, 2013. So to do this, I will enter 010113. And again, that is month, day, year. Once I've entered that input, I'm now ready to select my departure city, or where I will be flying from. You'll see that input to the right of the date of flight. You can click the down arrow at the far right side of the input to see those options. You'll be presented with a list of possible choices of departure cities. You can click any city in this list that you would like. Uh, for our purposes, I'll just click the first city, which happens to be Denver. Now, before I select a value in the Fly to City, I want to call out the Flights button that's here on the right side of the line. If you'll notice, try to click on it now a couple of times. You'll see that the button is disabled, and when you click on it, nothing happens. The reason for that is that we've not yet met all the prerequisites for what the system needs to actually be able to show us the available flights. The reason for that is we've only entered a date of our flight, and where we're flying from. We've not told the application where we want to fly to yet. So let's go ahead and select a value in the fly to drop down. So again we can do that by clicking that down arrow on the far right side of the input to show its options. And again quite like with the fly from drop down you'll see several choices. And Again you can click any city you like. Uh, for our purposes I'll just click the first entry which is for Frankfurt. You'll notice that once you click to select a value in the Fly2 input, the Flights button is now enabled. So if you click on it, you'll now be able to select a specific flight that you would like to take. So let's go ahead and click the Flights button now. Now when the new window pops up, uh, let's take just a quick second just to go over the information that's shown on the window. If you'll notice in the top left corner, the title of the window is Flights Table. In the top right corner, we have some window controls. We have the ability to minimize, maximize, and to close the window by clicking the X button. Uh, there's some data here in the middle of the window that we'll get to momentarily. And then there's two buttons at the bottom of the window. There's an OK button and a Cancel button. So after we make our selection of the flight that we would like to take, we'll click the OK button to lock in that selection. However, if we were not ready to select a specific flight, we can click the Cancel button. So now, let's go ahead and we'll click both the X button to close the window and the Cancel button just to show what those features do. So if you click the X button, you'll see that it closes the window. So now, let's click the Flights button again to relaunch it. Now, down at the bottom, let's click the Cancel button just to see that it actually closes the window. It does. Now let's click the Flights button again to relaunch it. Now, in the middle of the window, you'll see a data sheet that lists out lots of information about possible flights that you can choose from. The first column shows the flight numbers. The second column shows the fly from city. That's an abbreviation of the city. Since we chose Denver, that's why it's showing a value of D-E-N. The next column over shows the departure times. This is the available times that we can fly from Denver. The next column over is an abbreviation of the city that we're flying to. So since I chose Frankfurt, the abbreviation that the application is using for that value is F-R-A. The next column over shows the arrival times. This would be the times that we would actually arrive in Frankfurt for each of those specific flights. The next column over is a two-letter abbreviation for the airline. 
Then the last column is the price for that ticket. Now the price for this ticket, this is an economy price for the ticket. As we'll see momentarily, there are some other options that we could choose. We can choose business class as well as first class, but we'll see that momentarily. Now before we click the OK button to lock in those changes, I want to drag this window down because I want to call something out to you. If you'll see, look past the flights table window back to the flight reservation window. There are several values that are currently empty. The first one is flight number. The next is departure time. The next is arrival time. The next is airline. And the next is price. What you'll notice, when you click to select one of the values that's here in the flights table, and then you click the OK button, it is going to populate the values back in the flight reservation window with the specific flight that you select here in the flights table window. So just kind of observe those values because when we click OK, okay it is actually going to populate those values. So let's go and click OK. If you'll see, now there's values in the flight number, departure time, arrival time, airline, price, and total values. Now those values come from the flight that we just selected in the flights table window uh, just a few moments ago. Now the next input that we need to send in is a name. This is the name of the person who is purchasing the tickets. You can enter any value you like here, but I'll enter John Doe. Once you've entered a value in the name, in the name field, the next input down is class. Now the choices here are for first class, business class, and economy class. Now you can click to select any different value that you like here. Feel free to choose whatever. Click back to the economy radio button though because I want to show you something. A few moments ago when I had mentioned the price column and how I said that the price value that was being shown in that column was for an economy ticket. So if you'll remember the price value in that specific row that you selected is now being selected is now being inputted here into the price value. If you can see, my value here is $179.47. If you click to select a different class value, like let's click business for example. When you click business, you can now see that my value has changed and it's gotten more expensive. Now the update in price is just an update to show the price of the business class ticket for a flight from Denver to Frankfurt on January 1st, 2013. Now if you click the first radio button, you'll see that the value changes again and gets even more expensive. The system is just updating the price input based on the value that you've selected here in the class input. So let's just go ahead and click back over to economy to select that. The next input that we can interact with is tickets. Now the tickets value is saying what is the number of tickets that we're looking to purchase? So you can change this from 1 to 2 or to 3 or to whatever value you would like to choose. So I'll just change it back to 1 now. Now you'll notice the price input is shown below. We've already mentioned that. The input below that is called total. There's a value here and it currently is set as $179.47. The way that that number is calculated is it takes the number of tickets that you enter in the tickets input and it multiplies it times the price of the ticket. That resulting figure is then shown in the total value. So for our example, a total of one ticket multiplied times the price of $179.47 equals the total value of $179.47. Let's go up and let's change the tickets number from 1 to 2 to simulate that we were looking to purchase two tickets. Now as you'll see, if we multiply two tickets times the price of $179.47, that gives us a total purchase value of $358.94. So now once you've properly selected uh, the date of the flight, where you're flying from, where you're flying to, 
Uh, you've entered a customer name. You've selected the class of the ticket that you would like to purchase. The number of tickets that you would like to purchase. We're now ready to actually submit the order to purchase the ticket. However, before we do that, I want to call uh, just a couple of things out to you uh, because they'll happen kind of quickly after we click the Insert Order button. Once I click the button, you'll see a status message that will pop up here in the middle of the screen, and it will say Inserting Order. That'll be one thing that you'll see. Another thing that you'll see is here in the bottom left corner of the window, you see a status bar. That status bar will begin to have a blue bar that will progress from the left side of the screen to the right side of the bar. As it progresses along, you'll also see a number inside the status bar. It'll begin, say, at 10%. As the bar begins to grow from left to right, it would then increment itself. So maybe its next value that it shows is 20%, then 30%, then 40%. So you'll see that number continue to update in the middle of the status bar as the blue bar grows from left to right. Once the order has been successfully completed, we'll then see an order number value here in the bottom right corner. That'll let us know that the order has been successfully submitted. Now, let's go ahead and click the Insert Order button to actually create our order. Now, once the inserting order message goes away, the blue status bar goes away, you'll then see the phrase, Insert Done where the status bar had been, as well as an order number. In our example, uh, we've produced order number 17. So when you see that order number value, that means that you have successfully created a new flight order. So this now concludes our video. Uh, again, as a wrap-up, I've shown you the steps that you need to take to be able to create a new order.